What's up, YouTube? This is Miles McClendon. I just had some things that I would like to share that are on my heart. This morning, I looked at a sermon online from a popular church and I couldn't even finish. And this isn't the first time this has happened. A couple weeks ago, I listened to a, a sermon from another popular church and I tried to give it a chance to get to halfway and I couldn't finish it. It seems like the popular churches have great worship. They have focused all of their energies, not all of their energies, but they focused to a high degree with mainstream, cutting edge, creative worship that invites the presence of God. It really does. And I enjoy it. And I'm found lacking. I find lacking the, the dynamics of the sermons, the preaching, the doctrine, the boldness that is needed as a, as a preacher of the living God. I find that our, that our sermons are individualized, they're, they're self-motivated. They actually would fall into the category of motivational speeches rather than sermons from the Word of God. That is unacceptable. And it's been unacceptable and it's forcing me to speak out. To speak out against what has happened. What has happened? What has happened to where preachers are taking snippets of scriptures and they're, they're using it as motivational speeches. They're using it. The devil is perfectly fine with the sermons that are, that are mainstream, that are contemporary these days. I was sitting in a service and I heard a pastor say, a pastor, sin is anything less than God's best for your life. And I just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that you have entrusted into your care the souls that are walking through this earth to help them get to heaven, become a mature believer in Jesus Christ and even unbelievers and you tell us that sin is anything less than God's best for your life? Is that what God's word says? Brothers and sisters, if ever there was a time that you need to take to read your Bible for yourself, it is now. Read your Bible. Read it from cover to cover. Or have someone else read the Bible on the Bible app or on a CD or MP3 or on your computer while you sip coffee, while you drink tea, while you eat. Listen to the word because if you don't, you will be deceived. I saw in my post, and I'm so grateful for the overwhelming support 
And it just is evident that God has breathed on that message. But in the comments, I saw so much witchcraft language to support marijuana usage. It was unbelievable. It was truly unbelievable. And the reason why this is allowed to happen is because preachers, it starts with the church, because preachers are not preaching the word of God with conviction, holiness and conviction and the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't understand how people can be afraid to preach the truth we will stand before a holy and a living and a just and a righteous God. God makes the devil, who is basically a monster, tremble. God is, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living God. That's in Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, those in the faith, read your Bible so when it comes time to speak, you are able to recite scriptures. And then when you hear people who say they love God, you'll be able to discern what spirit they're really under. Because what America is preaching 99.9%, .9%, not everybody, but 99.9% .9 that you see pushed up on television is not preaching the word of God or they're preaching a portion of the word of God and they stay right there without giving you the full circle and context of God. They overemphasize God's grace and love so much that it almost it basically gives you a license to be selfish, to think of yourself, to be, to have no sacrifice of your flesh. Our flesh, the Bible says our flesh, this thing that we pamper up to look good, this thing that we put on, on social media to look good, the Bible says that no good thing dwelleth in our flesh. Paul said, I pull my body and bring it into subjection lest by my preaching I myself would be a castaway you have to bring your body into subjection which is discipline and one of the ways to do that is to fast to withdraw to pull away from the food to pull away from the plate and feed yourself the word of God. Drink some tea, drink some juice, drink some water. Don't eat so your spirit man can awaken. People smoking marijuana for me, and I'm gonna say for you, is an invitation into the spirit realm of the demonic. Some people say they have more insight into God. I'm not going to say that you don't. I had great conviction from God because I felt like I was spiritually unclothed when I would smoke weed. That's the best way to, to, to explain it. And that's actually in the book of Revelations where Jesus said, you want to be clothed in white garments lest I find you naked. That's it's like you're exposed. You do not want to be exposed. One of the things that happened with Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they realized they were unclothed. They realized they were naked. It's like the sin is the exposure of nakedness. And so what I want us to make sure that we're doing as believers is rightly believing, rightly believing. There's another thing that I felt like on my heart that I need to address that I've seen in the comments. Satan and Jesus are not the same. Satan and Jesus are not the same. Satan and God is not the same being. Satan was created. God ever liveth. 
and ever was, he who was and who is and who is to come. It breaks my heart, man. It breaks my heart to, to see the condition of the world. It breaks my heart that people who are in authority to preach the word of God, to influence people to do righteousness, are not doing it. I've been hurt by people who said that they love God and were in authority. And it just taught me some more lessons. It taught me more lessons. My wife, she gave me a good word. She said, Miles, the thing that you're looking for, you be it. And I want to tell that to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. The thing that you are expecting from men and women of God to be, you be it. And I want you to love like Jesus loved. I want you to love like Jesus loved. Jesus gave a commandment that says, no other commandment I give you. I give you one new commandment, and that's to love each other as I have loved you. Because when you love each other like we love ourselves, there's a flaw in that because we can love ourselves wrong, which means I can love you wrong. But Jesus said, I want you to love each other like I have loved you. I want you to emulate me, my love towards each other. That involves forgiveness. Sometimes you need therapy to help you to program how to release. The Lord told me forgiveness is just release. Just say, I release. We need to learn how to say sorry. We ask God, which is telling him, I'm sorry for my sins. But you need to learn how to say sorry to your brother and sister, to your wife, to your children. You need to learn how to tell somebody, I messed up, I made a mistake, and I really mean it. There's no room for pride and stubbornness in the pride of life. It's, 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 it's so much that it has to take God to change your heart. To change my heart continuously. This type of word for me, if I heard a preacher coming forth like this, I would follow that person. I would study that individual and see Hey, that person is not playing. That person is, is not playing. And I just want you all to know that God will give these words because he loves you. He'll give you these words because he loves you. This is not, oh, we can't talk negative or we can't talk bad or we can't come down. No, the Lord wants you to be saved. He wants your soul to go to be with him in heaven. And he did great lengths through Jesus Christ so that we could partake in the divine nature and live forever. The devil does not have that privilege. So let's stop entertaining his doctrines, his, his ways and methods and thoughts that are from the world they should not mingle with the church. The church should derive its mind and its theology and its speech and its behaviors from God's word. We should be distinct. Christian rhetoric will not go away because Christian rhetoric is God talk. And I want to talk like my Lord. I want to talk like my father. I want to talk like the one who spoke things into existence. That's Christian rhetoric. It will never go away. It will never go away. It will abide forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will never pass away. 
the flesh of a man is like the glory of a flower or the glory of a man and his flesh is like the glory of a flower and the grass, the grass withers and the flower fades away. That's the same way our glory does. You might look good right now, but as the time goes by, you're gonna get old. But you know what will never get old is God's word. His word will never pass away. His word endures forever and ever. And that is the only thing that we can live by. When the devil tried to tempt Jesus, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Preachers, you need to preach the word of God, the whole entire counsel of God. You will be held accountable. Let there not be many masters among you because they shall receive the greater condemnation. God will judge the teachers of this generation more harshly than those who weren't. If you are in a platform, if you are in an elevated platform where you influence millions, thousands, hundreds, fifties, tens, your household of people, God will hold you accountable. Let's stop trying to please people and try to please the one who came down and died for us. I pray this touches your soul. Be blessed. I love you and I'm praying for you continuously in Jesus name.